Let's frog some shit. Hello and welcome. My name is Sheena Piero. I'm an author and network designer, and I've been a little absent here on YouTube for the last few weeks. So I thought that we would have kind of a casual chat to get caught up with. I'll tell you what I'm working on and everything and where I've been um, while I work on frogging some old projects and repairing some socks. So if this is your first time here and you're a little bit confused by what's going on, check out this playlist over here or maybe over here, um, which is all of my regular podcast episodes. But we usually talk about, hello sir, we usually talk about books and writing and knitting and creating on this channel. Uh, so there's a whole plethora over there that you could watch instead. And there is definitely some cat content. So if you have a few people who has been wondering where I've been lately, um, the short version is that April was overwhelming, May exploded, and I've spent most of June cleaning up the aftermath. The longer version is that I've been playing medication roulette since February, which has had a lot of physical and mental side effects that have dramatically impacted my ability to write, film, edit, and in general, just take care of myself and my surroundings. And then I finally got the green light to go on a trip I've been trying to take for two years and suddenly I had two weeks to plan it. So I had to very quickly get my meds to a point where I could function at least 50% of the time. And then I flew back to Ohio, which is where I'm from, mm. and went to pick up my mom. My parents split up two years ago, but the divorce was only finalized in May. My mom got her settlement so she could finally move out of state. Um, so she got a new car and a friend and I drove her and her dog all the way across the country to Washington. And now she lives in the building next to us. Um, I love my mom. We are really good friends. And even though we don't agree on everything, that's perfectly fine. And then the friend who came with us ended up staying for three weeks, which is fantastic. I haven't seen her in five years, but it was also just a lot of togetherness and my introvert brain couldn't really handle it. <laughs> um, so my friend will be going back the day after this video goes live on Thursday, hopefully. Um, so after that, things should get back to normal, except for the medication thing, which is ongoing. Um, I, though I didn't change meds in May or June, um, I thought that poking the brain weasels and messing with their food while on a cross-country road trip would be a bad idea. So for now, they are all unhappy, but they are still safely caged up in their pen, usually. So what I'm working on right now, I have several pieces that need to be repaired, some that need to be frogged, some of them that need to be remade. Um, this was originally a pattern prototype. It did not turn out the way I wanted it to, and the yarn is such that I can't really wear it against my skin. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going to frog it, I'm going to reclaim the yarn, and use it for something else. Okay, so let's back up to mid-May when I got the phone call about the trip. Um, so if you are not familiar with my family situation, I will leave a link to that video up above in the cards. Um, but basically, I needed to get out there as soon as possible to make sure that my mom was in a safe situation and also to make sure that my aunt and my grandmother were in a safe situation. They're still back in Ohio. I'm not going to say where, um, but it was really key because of circumstances to make sure that they were no longer in the place that my dad could find them. So I flew out about two weeks after I got that call um, and then landed in Columbus. Um, that was a lot of fun because we ended up landing through a, a thunderstorm, really bad thunderstorm from what I've heard. But um, basically I don't get motion sick, but if we had been in the air another two minutes, 
um, I'm pretty sure that those flight attendants would have had one hell of a mess to clean up because I was not the only one feeling it. The turbulence was really bad. Um, so we got back to where uh, my family was staying and they were living on some family property that is on a lake about an hour outside of Columbus. And this is the area that I've been talking about in the spring since March that got hit by a really bad tornado on March 14th. And this was my first time seeing the devastation, like so much is just gone. They lost the uh, city hall, they lost the library, um, even the laundromat was gone. And it was kind of funny because like the building itself is gone. There's nothing there, it's just a concrete slab, but they still had all of the washers and dryers hooked up. And there were people standing there doing their laundry, just open air. <laughs> Um, which I'm glad that they at least had that service. Um, and there's a lot of like, politics going on right now where they're basically trying to stop the poorer people from rebuilding. Um, and it, it's just, it's a whole mess. I could do a whole video about that, but I'm not going to. Um, but I stayed with my family for about four days. I was not expecting to get to see anyone except for one of my friends. And we actually realized a couple of days before I flew out, Ash and I, that why not have her drive out with me? Because with my health and everything, I've been really struggling with fatigue. And I didn't know if I would be able to drive for six to eight hours a day by myself. So having a second driver really, really helped me out on that. Um, but we got to hang out for a day. I got to see some cousins that I didn't think I was going to get to see. And then uh, we also met up with another friend from high school that I didn't think I was going to get to see. So that was really lovely. It was a whirlwind. I was going like dawn to dusk every single day. Um, and then on Tuesday, we went to the car dealership and picked out the car. Um, so as I mentioned in my whole like family video, my mom is disabled and does not drive. Um, so I am her primary driver. So she bought the car, but it's kind of for me, but also it's for all of us because the car that we currently have is just too small for three adults to sit in it comfortably. And with taking more passengers now, I really needed something that was going to be bigger and roomier and more comfortable. And the new car is also a lot easier for Ash to get in and out of with her disabilities. So all around, it was just a good match. And it ended up, it didn't really save us money on like renting a car or anything, but it solved several problems at the same time by purchasing a car in Ohio and then driving it out to Washington. Um, so we did that and um, it's great. I love it. It's a Hyundai Kona. I don't have enough good things to say about this car. Um, I got the base model and I could probably do a whole video just about this car because cars are one of my special interests and I spent a year and a half researching this one. So, um, sorry, my yarn is tangled. <laughs> so once we had the car, um, we started loading up for the trip and I, when I did the test drive, I thought that it was much roomier on the inside than it appeared from the outside, and to an extent it is. However, um, my mom and I are not great at guessing volumes or remembering the sizes of things. So um, suffice to say that a lot of stuff got left behind, a lot of stuff got shipped. You don't want to know what the shipping bill was for what my aunt sent to Washington, um, but it was insane. So we've packed up the car. We fit more in there than we thought we could, but not as much as we wanted to. And originally 
we were going to rent a trailer to go with the car. However, because it was a brand new car, we couldn't put a trailer on it right away because number one, we it didn't come with a tow hitch. We would have to find someone to install it with about 24 hours notice tops and have it done the same day. Um, we would also couldn't do it because um, if you put a trailer on a car before the transmission and the engine and the brakes are broken in, which takes about 3,000 miles total for all of it, um, you can do some serious damage to the internal workings of the car. And considering it was brand new and only had 30 miles on it, we really didn't want to do that. So we had to nix the trailer. Um, we did have like a cargo, I call it a luggage hat. It's like a cargo bag that goes on the roof. It was not as described on the Amazon listing because it said that it would work for um, cars or SUVs with or without rails. My SUV does not have rails, um, which means that we had to bungee everything in place and then drive about 10 miles to the nearest Walmart and buy some ratcheting straps. And then we were able to secure it that way so that it would be safe to drive with. Um, however, that also meant that we had the ratcheting straps going over the top of the car and then inside through the doors. So every time it rained, we got wet. That's a lot of fun. Not really, not really. Um, but it was still a really great drive for the most part. Um, we took a different route than I did when we initially moved out to Washington. And that was for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, this route is faster, but we had construction when we moved out here. So we took a little bit more of a circuitous route. And then, um, so we drove through Indiana, Illinois, Iowa, South Dakota, Montana, a little tiny bit of Wyoming, and then Montana, Idaho, and Washington. And we made really good time. We were able to get in about eight hours of driving every single day, which was what my goal was. Um, there were a couple hiccups though. Um, so on the second day we had Panera for breakfast and I did not know this, but apparently my co-driver can't eat avocado, um, but she likes avocado. So she got avocado on a sandwich and then ended up terribly, terribly sick the entire day, which was not fun for any of us. I had to do pretty much all of the driving, but the breaks that we had to take for her also kind of worked for me. So it was fine. I was able to make it through. Um, and then she was a lot better by the next day and was able to continue. Um, but that was a really hard day and we got to our hotel a lot later than we wanted to. Um, so the first day was kind of uneventful. Second day, which was all in South Dakota, was way more eventful than we wanted it to be. And then, um, South Dakota is kind of unhinged if you've never been there. At least, you know, if you're driving along, I think it's I-90, uh, their road signs are really funny, uh, specifically for wall drug. Um, I had no idea what that was. I'm still not entirely certain what it is, but we did stop there. And it's kind of like a big shopping slash museum slash cafe slash semi-historical type of town. It's really hard to describe, but if you're from South Dakota, you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, that was really fun. We wanted to stay a little bit longer and get our lunch there and everything. But unfortunately, because we had my mom's dog with us, we couldn't do that. Um, Wes is highly reactive to other dogs because he's been attacked before. And it just wasn't a good mix because it was a great place. There were lots of people with their families and their pets and everything. But unfortunately with Wes, that was a really bad combination and he got very stressed. He was barking a lot. He kept lunging at the other dogs because he felt defensive, like he needed to protect himself. 
So mom took him back to the car and they waited there for a while. And then my friend and I just kind of did a really quick run through of what was available and then met her back up and then we went uh, and got food. Um, that was probably the most eventful day of the whole drive. We stayed in some pretty nice hotels. We stayed in some really crappy hotels. <laughs> um, and then we finally got back on Monday night. And I was already kind of at my limit by that point, just because um, I'd even been sharing a bed with my friend because we couldn't afford to get two rooms. So it was just a lot of togetherness, a lot. And then uh, we were back in Ohio and we took a couple of rest days. And then we had to move my mom into her apartment and that was a whole adventure in itself. Um, like I said, she does live in my apartment complex. We recently had our manager leave without telling anyone. And then we got a new manager who showed up without telling anyone. And the new manager gave her the wrong apartment number three times. So we finally got her moved into the correct apartment, which ended up being a lot smaller than we were told it was going to be. Um, doesn't have the amenities it was supposed to have because they gave away the one that she was supposed to have. Um, and the movers were not great. <laughs> um, so that was kind of an awful day, but we made it through. Um, and then that weekend, so the weekend after we got back from Ohio, we went down to Portland with Ash and her mom and we did a bunch of thrifting and antiquing, which was a little bit of a challenge with the dog. Um, I did manage to work in a stop for a yarn shop, which was like Stardust or Starlight yarn or something on the outskirts of Portland. Really cute shop. I really liked it. Um, we were struggling with our GPS there. We kept losing the signal for some reason. Um, or it kept rerouting me out of the blue. Like the map would just start spinning. It was really hard to get around for a while. And then we came back, um, and it was a lot. It was just a lot, a lot. And we ended up with five very burned out people, five very burned out neurodivergent people, um, all trying to make things work at the same time. And it led to some really major communication errors. Um, that part was not so fun. That was not my favorite part. <laughs> um, but we also went to Powell's while we were in Portland, which if you've never been to Powell's, it is definitely the biggest bookstore on the West Coast. It might be the biggest bookstore in the country. And I love it, but it is so overwhelming. It's so overstimulating. I feel sick every time I'm in there just because there's so much happening. And I usually have to wear earplugs because they have very high ceilings. So even if it's not really that loud in there, um, it can feel loud just because of the acoustics. Um, but I did get three books. I got The Love and Lies of Roxana Ali, which is a YA coming out story. And I first saw this book the first time I was in Powell's about seven years ago now. Um, and I thought that it was very fitting that I purchase it on my second trip. And then I also got Leah on the Offbeat, which I haven't read yet. And then last night I finished the third book I got, which was The Librarian of Burned Books. And I really loved that one. Um, I enjoyed that quite a lot. I've been on a World War II kick lately because I listen to documentaries to sleep. And World War II is probably the most documented period in world history. So uh, I've been reading that just to kind of chill out in my downtime. Uh, 
but it's just been, we've been going and going and going since we got back. Um, I took my friend to see Tacoma and the ocean. Ocean's about two hours away from us. We also took her to a local beach on the Sound. We spent a day in Seattle. We are going back to Seattle tomorrow for a tour we couldn't get into uh, last week. But it's just, it's been a lot. There has been so much going on. I've been having trouble keeping up with all of it. And I, I need a vacation for my vacation because on top of everything else, I am still unemployed. So I've still been trying to, to like author things and failing. I've been trying to do social media things and failing. Um, I've been trying to work on like government assistant applications, disability stuff, um, trying to reduce some of our bills and it's just been a lot happening. And that is why I have not had time to film because even if I was only dealing with a third of what's been happening, I still probably wouldn't have had time or spoons to film or do anything for the internet. So that has been a lot. It, that's just, that's the only way I can describe it is it's been a lot. <laughs> So I have been working on some very basic projects while I've been gone. Um, I made two little triangular granny square kerchiefs. Uh, one of them is mine. It matches the uh, gothic flamingo sweater that I finished up earlier this year. It's made from some of the leftover yarn from that. And the other one is actually not there. Uh, I can't reach it. I will insert some photos. The other one is made from the leftovers from a pair of socks that I finished while I was on the trip. Um, and then after that, I started working on like a triangular kerchief slash shawl thing. And I was trying to work on my rainbow sweater. And my brain was just like, nope, I know that this is all stockinette stitch, just knit stitch, garter, stockinette. Um, we're not going to do it. So I've been obsessively crocheting tiny granny squares for the last week. Um, and those are going into an afghan because I decided that the piece that I was making the floral motifs for last time, I decided I didn't like it. I didn't like the way it was coming out. I was very unhappy with the way the yarns were working together. I didn't like how thick it was. Um, so I just decided to frog the whole thing. And now I'm using the scraps that were going into that, most of them to do a similar concept, but just using granny squares instead of flowers. So I will show you some of the granny squares that I've made in some clips here. And then other than that, that's pretty much where I'm at. Um, I have done a little bit of writing and editing stuff, but I'm going to save that for another video. And I thought I had more to say on this, but it's just been so much, so much. I, I don't even think that I can get my thoughts together enough to put it into words at this point because so much of it is just a blur. I feel like I am a pinball that has been going from one side of the country to the other and I haven't had time to catch my breath really yet. That is where I've been. That is where things stand and I'm going to go finish ripping out this sweater off camera and 
maybe we'll do a mending video next. Until next time, if you would do me the favor of liking, subscribing, commenting, or sharing, we'll see you next time. And until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope you have something cute and fluffy to cuddle with. Ciao!